So today we'll be looking at the maximum likelihood destiny of a normal distribution. The maximum likelihood destiny of normal distribution. Suppose we have a set of maximum um, positive normal variables, say x1, x2, up to xn, and these variables are independent and identical. Then the probability distribution of normal is given as this. 1 divided by square root of 2 pi sigma squared, exponential raised to the minus 1 over 2 sigma squared, into bracket x of the pi minus mu, into bracket of the minus power 2. And uh, this distribution we can write in this form it says f of x i equals to 2 pi sigma squared, yeah, 2 pi sigma squared raised to the power minus 1 over 2. Exponential minus 1 over 2 sigma squared into bracket x of the i minus mu raised to the power 2. This is another form of writing this. Now, on this, we can still break it down further. Um, let's say, okay, let's say that this was say f of x i equals to this. Now, in this um, distribution, we have two parameters. The first parameter is the mu. And the second one is the sigma squared. This is the mean and this is the variance. So now we're we'll looking for the micro likelihood of this mean and this sigma squared in this normal distribution. Now the first step. That is step one. What's our first step? We take the likelihood. Take the likelihood of this function. And we're going to have it in this. We have a mu comma sigma squared on x of i. It is x1, x2, up to xn equals to this. We're going to have a 2 pi sigma squared root of power minus n over 2 exponential root of power minus 1 over 2 sigma squared. Solution into bracket x i minus mu raised to power 2. We've taken the likelihood of the distribution. Then, after this, we're going to take the natural law to step 2. Take the natural law. And in taking the natural law of the distribution, we say we have a mean. Mu comma sigma squared from x of the pi, x of the pi equals to, say the mean, into bracket 2 pi sigma squared raised to the power minus n over 2, mean exponential minus 1 over 2 sigma squared, summation x of the pi. Minus mu is power 2. Now, we can further break this down into 2. With these two pi is given us, we can break it down into 2 and raise to power minus n over 2. And how do we do that? We can say, okay, let's look at this then. Mean 2 pi, 2 pi raised to power minus n over 2 plus mean. Sigma squared is equal to n minus n over 2. Because both 2 pi and sigma squared minus n is equal to 2 belongs to both 2 pi and sigma squared. Then the n is the inverse of exponential. And this will cancel this. Then we have minus 1 over 2 sigma squared. Solution xi minus mu is equal to 2. The power of order. We can also write this in this form. So we have um, this equals to so minus 2 minus n over 2 lean 2 pi minus n over 2 multiplied by capacity. We still have minus n over 2 lean sigma square. The other minus, which is a um, Summation 
x of x i minus u raised to power 2 divided by 2 sigma squared. Now, this is the simplification of this step 2. Taking the natural log of this um, um, likelihood of this distribution. Now, what's the next step to do? So, step 3. First, uh, differentiate. We differentiate with respect to the parameter. And we will not forget we have two parameters. We differentiate with respect to the two parameters. And what are the parameters? The mean and the sigma, sigma squared. Then after finding the relative, then equal to zero. Equal to zero. Then and from for the parameter. And so for the parameter. Now in step three, we are going to take it on each parameter one after the other. So first of all, we are going to take it on the mean. And what we do? The differential respect to mean says the mean likelihood zero mass square x i divided by the mu equals to now we are going to differentiate this directly with respect to me. And that means that we look at this, we have nothing that has to do with me. If we look at this, we have nothing that has to do with me. Let's say this is an efficient star. So we are working with this efficient star. Here we have nothing to do with me. Here we have nothing to do with you. Then this particular one is obvious. To differentiate now, let's say the over the mu. Minus solution x i minus u sigma squared divided by 2 sigma squared. So this is what we are differentiating you know? the two, this two is going to be zero. This is zero, this is zero. Now we're going to differentiate it with respect to this. And now we do this. We have our this is equals to this derivative is the function of function, or we call it our composite function. Apply the complex function here, and we're going to have the, this is going to give us, uh, if you differentiate minus minus, it will give us minus 1, then that minus 1 is going to neutralize this negative here. This will come to this place. So, in short, we're going to have 2 summation x mu minus x i minus mu divided by 2 sigma square, then equate this to 0. So we can see, by the time we cross multiply this, sigma square multiplied by this will still give us a zero. So this will give us to the summation x i minus u equals to zero. Now I want to open this bracket. Opening this bracket means we have this is equals to summation x i minus n mu. We cannot have summation mu. We cannot have summation mu because mu is already the name. So we have a minus n i equals to we are going to start from the challenge now, which is that mu car. So this will be your universe and mu car equals to solution x i. That is, we take this to the other side and making mu car the solution of mu car equals to solution x i divided by a divided by a and this can be written in this form, which is a mu cap equals to x bar, which is the mean of this distribution. The like, maximum likelihood of mean in this normal distribution is still because um, x car. Mu, we're still in this step to the pressure with respect to the second parameter, which is the sigma squared. We are differentiating that with respect to the third parameter. And now we will say the, the sigma square now lean likelihood of the so I'm writing this out likelihood of so 
like in the new comma z minus square comma x time equals to yeah where is it with respect to z minus one now do you have anything to do with this point? No, because we don't have any function of z minus one nothing I have to do with this way now to endeavor with this we say we have minus n to the 2 the let me put this in the bracket the z minus square and what do we have there? mean z minus square then we are also differentiating this this is uh, minus solution x i minus u divided by 2 so divided by 2 the multiplied by 2 divided by the sigma square multiplied by 1 over the sigma square that's the 1 over sigma square and here we get to have this says minus n over 2 multiply by the derivative of the sigma square will give us 1 by sigma square we say multiply by 1 over sigma square now the derivative of the root is what by what it is it is summation x i minus u divided by 2 multiply by the, the sigma square into bracket 1 over sigma square which means we are differentiating this and then multiply it with uh, the, the pain element which is here now we have minus n, the derivative of this is this already now in differentiating this we are going to have our minus because we have minus here then solution x i minus u square don't forget we have square there is square there then divided by 2 multiplied by the derivative of this is going to give us um, minus 1 over sigma square raised to the power 2 that's what it's going to give us and how we do that? let's assume that our sigma square equals to x now if we don't have 1 over x you know what that will give us in indices it's going to give us x raised to the power minus 1 then the derivative of this x raised to the power minus 1 will give us minus x raised to the power minus 2 that is the derivative of x raised to the power minus 1 is x raised to the power minus 2 now we cannot use indices to write this in this form and that will give us minus 1 over x raised to the power x raised to the power 2 rather. this gives us x raised to the power 2 and you don't forget we say our x equals to sigma square then substituting sigma square here you know, we are going to have a sigma square raised to the power 2 and that is how we got the derivative here now here we are going to have a equals to minus n over 2 sigma square minus plus minus will give us plus and uh, we shouldn't uh, forget here now by the time we multiply this by this we get to have a uh, summation into bracket x i minus u square divided by 2 sigma square plus power 2 the direct we are going to do is that we equate to 2 0 by the time we equate to 0 we get to have equals to 0 after making it to be equals to 0 our LCM here is 2 sigma square plus power 2 our LCM is 2 sigma square 2 sigma square raised to power 2 2 sigma square will take this 2 sigma square we remain on 2 sigma square multiply by this we have minus 10 sigma square plus this in place will just be 1 multiply by this and we have summation x i minus u raised to power 2 equals to 0 if I cross multiply this we are going to have 2 sigma square raised to power 2 multiply by 0 equals to 0 therefore we can have minus n sigma square plus summation x i minus u raised to power 2 equals to 0 taking 
Do it to the other side of the right to get to the What is that? The other one. N is equal to N equals to summation x i minus nu raised to the power 2. Now we are solving for the parameters. And solve for the parameters. And the parameters are in the room. Making this sigma square the subject. Now we are going to have a sigma square cap equals to summation x plus i minus nu raised to the power 2 divided by n. And that is the likelihood, maximum likelihood of um, sigma square in this normal distribution. The maximum likelihood of mu of sigma of, of a mu is this, which is the mean. And the maximum likelihood of sigma square is also the which is the sample uh, sample variance. You can see that is how this is the simplest way of getting the maximum likelihood. Of this distribution. Now we should not forget the distribution. We are dealing with two parameters. The first one is the mean and the second one is the sigma square. In getting this, we should make sure that we revise our knowledge of our um, differentiation very well because without that knowledge, one will not be able to arrive at this answer. Thank you for